Simone, what a pleasure to have you in the room as a partner to the Branson Center, because of course you represent the United Nations Development Programs, Accelerator Labs in South Africa. And so we've partnered to create the Food Waste Innovation Challenge. And so it's my pleasure to be in conversation with you and to talk about, I think, the Sustainable Development Goals and so much more and how that relates to how we enable entrepreneurs in South Africa. So thank you for your time and welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Great stuff. Please can you maybe tell us a little bit more about yourself in terms of your work, why you do your work, and of course the work of the UNDP Accelerator Labs SA. Sure. So maybe I should start with um, the UNDP and what we do. Yes. So basically the United Nations Development Programme is the International Development Agency of the United Nations. So we focus on convening the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, within South Africa, we have a country office here where we have three portfolios focusing on governance, inclusive growth and nature, climate and energy. And then we have the Accelerate Lab, where, uh, which is where I work. Um, and we focus on trying to infuse innovation both internally and externally in the work that we do and accelerate the achievement of, of the SDGs by redreaming the way that we deliver development. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I love this idea of redreaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I think sometimes we assume that we know what we're talking about when we say things like SDGs. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think over time, maybe sometimes these definitions get a bit fuzzy or we start having other interpretations, but actually as somebody who really sits in the home and the custodian of the SDGs, what do we mean when we're talking about the Sustainable Development Goals? So the Sustainable De Development Goals are part of Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development, um, which was adopted by all UN member states in 2015. Um, it's called Transforming Our World. Mm -hmm. So there are 17 interlinked and interdependent goals that range over um, you know, a wide variety of development challenges like no poverty or gender or climate change and so on. Um, but overall, what the Sustainable Development Goals are trying to do is to eradicate poverty, protect our planet and ensure that all people live in peace and pro prosperity. So the SDGs, um, what they provide is a, a blueprint towards mm -hmm. a more sustainable and better world. It's it For me, it feels optimistic. Mm. It feels like something that can bring hope and actually infuse a sense of action when we start talking about repairing our planet or, you know, creating healthier societies yeah. or more sustainable businesses because we're chasing towards a target. Absolutely. And once you have a target, I think that infers that you can reach it. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, I totally agree. Why 2030? Maybe. I don't know if you know why um, because I'm like, that's interesting, 2030. And it kind of – I've heard – so many things and I've read a lot around we start talking about this decade of action mm. so from 2020 to 2030 what's happening in terms of this decade of action and what 2030 is about sure so so 2030 is when the SDG targets end that was when we were hoping to to reach what we had set out the goals um, and as you mentioned you know that there are actually 169 targets attached to the 17 um, sustainable development goals so right now we have nine years left to achieve mm. this um, you know though much progress has been made prior to COVID, we were not on track to achieving the SDGs. And now with the impacts of the pandemic, it's really exacerbated development challenges. As you know, we, you know we've seen poverty increase for the first time since 1998. Um, so that is why now there's, we're calling it the decade of action to try and really get everyone or everyone in society mm. to redouble their efforts to, to reach these important targets. Yeah. So then for me, that presents whenever there's a challenge, particularly in terms of maybe there's a gap or we're not quite where we want to be. Yeah. I feel like there's an opportunity. And so that for me speaks to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And so what do you see being the role of entrepreneurs in perhaps driving towards achieving some of the targets as articulated by the SDGs. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's such an important point because the pandemic has disrupted so many of our systems. And I think that is an opportunity um, and it's an opportunity that we can't squander because we will very rarely be in this position where systems are disrupted to this point where we can really, really transform them um, and change them. And I think entrepreneurship, I mean, you know, as I said, the, the goals are really interlinked. So we need to um, you know, create jobs and um, address climate change and uh, all of these these multiple things all together, um, gender empowerment and so on. So um, with entrepreneurs creating new businesses in this space now where the system has been disrupted means that they can really create businesses which, with purposes that mm -hmm. are aligned to the sustainable development goals and that contribute to achieving that for 
the betterment of all of society. Um, and that's why I think there's really a window of opportunity now for entrepreneurs in this new space. Um, and particularly actually in green entrepreneurship, green mm. and blue entrepreneurship. Um, we've seen, you know, there's a lot of talk around building back better, which really is around building back greener. Mm. If we look at South Africa's reconstruction and recovery plan, there's a strong emphasis on um, green sectors for recovery, um, like green economy, water, tourism, energy, food security, and so on. And this means that there'll be windows of opportunity opening now um, for entrepreneurs in that space in the country as we build back better and build back green. So what really excites me is my favorite word, which is purpose. And so, you know, understanding this idea that um, entrepreneurs and enterprises can have their purpose aligned mm. to these audacious goals mm -hmm. and yet achievable goals is starting to talk about us building back better in a way that's good for people, planet and profit. And so how can entrepreneurs think about embedding the SDGs in what they're doing, whether it's the targets or maybe the impact frameworks or at least the measurement frameworks? Mm -hmm. In terms of entrepreneurs who are purpose-led, impact-driven, how can they ensure that the SDGs are things that they can use as tools to measure their impact? Mm -hmm. What frameworks exist? what methodologies perhaps exist? Is that even something that an entrepreneur can think about as they grow their business? Certainly, I mean, the, the, the first thing I want to say to your last point is that if we're going to achieve the SDGs, we need a whole of society approach and everybody needs to be involved, particularly um, business. As you mentioned earlier, I know you love the word purpose. Yes. So I think what the SDGs provide as well is not only a common language, but a common purpose for all everyone in society to aim towards. And of course, when you have a common purpose, you have a deeper impact. Mm. As far as reporting on, on the SDGs, um, we have the United Nations Global Compact, which assists companies to um, design a more sustainable trajectory. We have the um, Global Reporting Initiative, GRI. Um, so there, there are many frameworks and, and ways to report. Um, and you can imagine that, you know, that it's an enormous task for national yeah. statistics um, agencies to, to report and capture um, data and analyze that data to report on the SDGs. So the more that we have individual organizations, whether it's SMMEs or, or large corporates, reporting themselves, the better you know it is, the more it helps to to get access to accurate data. Amazing. And I think it's it's that thing where it feel it can feel quite overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I'm sure when many people, very big brains, think about this, it's huge when you start talking about 169 targets. But I really like the idea of each individual entrepreneur and their business with its specific purpose mm -hmm. aligning to a goal or two or a target or two suddenly gets, you know, means that the collective is actually adding piece by piece to achieving these targets. Absolutely. And I was actually reading a report by KPMG that was written in 2018. I think it's I think it's titled How to Report on the SDGs. Um, and what they found was that 84% of companies have figured out which SDGs they mm. align to, of the big companies, and up to 40% are already reporting on an SDG, SDG in their corporate reporting structure. Um, and I find that so heartening. Because that really is... A you sorry you you just think that maybe because it feels so big you would think that we, no one's doing anything mm -hmm. but 40% already says something what it says to me is that business is acknowledging that results that contribute to the SDGs are results that matter it's so interesting that uh, you mention around the reporting and how there are these big reporting standards that you know and and even institutions like the UN Global Compact which are focused on assisting large corporations and big business to report against the targets and mm. what is happening in terms of results for SDGs. So should big business be playing a role in achieving these targets or is this something that you think is a nice to have? Yes, is the, <laughs> like a resounding yes, okay. is the very short answer. Um, and I think if we take it as sort of more of an internal facing perspective, very simply, businesses cannot succeed where societies fail. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, we've seen that in the unrest in South Africa in July, where there were huge losses um, for corporations. Um, and the real root cause of that was poverty and inequality. So, um, you know, that's it. Essentially, businesses cannot succeed where societies are failing. I think as well, the SDGs, um, you know, what they're aiming to do is shift 
um, markets and policies. And what that means then, if businesses are aligned to the SDGs, is it starts to open opportunities mm. for, for emerging areas and, and for new businesses and so on. If we look at renewable energy is, is one example of that. And I think another sort of internal reason that businesses can can think about is that you know we see the the youth the, the younger generation now really having much higher environmental values mm-hmm. um, and caring much more about sustainability and if business wants to attract talent in the future they're going to need to align to that new value set where sustainability is is far more prioritized absolutely and i what i'm really enjoying about what you're talking about is how this is a real bottom line decision actually mm-hmm. when you start talking about you know people and the talent that comes into your business your customer in terms of who you service as a business and therefore this is no longer csi or nice to have this is proper bottom line stuff yeah i absolutely agree and i think it's the same kind of um, discourse we've seen around climate change now where people are realizing that it really is about survival this Mm. isn't a nice to have it's something that it is imperative that we shift and transform our systems and when we look at business's role you know the thing is um, business has a huge capacity to contribute to the sdgs Um, they have the skills for innovation and for tech Mm. development they have enormous capital to invest where they can start shifting sort of you know financial markets um, and then they also have the the human capacity really so they have this capacity to to contribute and i think you know we also i believe that we have a moral responsibility to leave our world in a better place than than a better state than than what we found it in um, and with businesses role in really shaping consumer demand financial market policy and regulatory markets they can play an incredible positive role in that Um, to then, you know, contribute to the SDGs. Absolutely. So I'm just going to change tack a little bit and find out a little bit more about your work. So you're at the Accelerator Labs and you talk about accelerating, you know, the the achievement towards or the path Mm -hmm. towards achieving the targets that set by the SDGs. And so what does that look like in terms of your day-to-day or at least overall picture and the partnerships that you have and why? Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you mentioned partnerships because that's a very important part of our work. Um, But basically, the Accelerator Labs, as I said, were set up to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. Um, And what we do is we are bringing in a range of of novel methodologies to do that. Um, So the ACT Labs are based on kind of a few core premises. The first is that we we need to diversify the way that we understand development challenges. So draw on a much broader um, intelligence so and diversify the, the collective intelligence that we're using to, to understand development challenges. Um, we need to look at what people are really doing at the coal face because they're the best um, position to know what solutions work for the, ch- the development challenges mm. that they're facing. So, you know, that kind of grassroots solutions and innovations is what we then try to scale. Um, And the third aspect is experimentation. So doing short, quick experiments to validate the solutions that we are coming up with um, to ensure that they do actually address the solutions. Sounds like entrepreneurship. It really sounds like the entrepreneur's journey in terms of you experiment, you validate, Mm -hmm. and then you keep iterating and you keep expanding on what you're doing. And so in terms of your work and what you're seeing here in South Africa through the Accelerator Labs, and perhaps the intersection of your work with entrepreneurship, what are you seeing in terms of maybe the challenges that are being you know, articulated by the entrepreneurs and how mm. they're addressing them with their solutions? Mm. So I think, firstly, um, we very much prioritize entrepreneurship in South Africa in order to you know, build back better. As we said, um, you know, it's around job creation, economic growth, but then also um, the green entrepreneurship mm. side. Um, and what we see, um, we actually asked some of the entrepreneurs that UNDP supports the other day, sort of what their challenges are and, and where they see um, opportunities to sort of overcome those. And one of the biggest was was funding, um, it's particularly funders that are willing to take high risk. Mm-hmm. Actually, one person used the word um, patient funders. We need patient Patient funders. capital. Patient capital um, and funders who will actually assist in R&D um, to get the businesses to a stage where, where they can scale. Um, but what was quite interesting on the flip side of that, then, how do we, you know, how do we overcome these challenges? The um, sort of clearest answer that came out was around awareness and knowledge. Mm-hmm. So um, particularly raising knowledge and awareness around green solutions and that these solutions exist. So how do we you know, start um, getting a market for these solutions um, and scaling and replicating as much as possible? Absolutely. And I think for us, we have a really clear 
vision where we think the best way to enable entrepreneurs is to give them access to network, which mm -hmm. is then the sort of awareness, give them access to market, which then becomes access to customers, mm -hmm. and then of course access to finance, which then really is the funding piece. And so it's really nice to be in alignment with a partner when it comes to these kinds of conversations in terms of how we can enable entrepreneurs. Yeah, absolutely. And I think particularly working in the space to talk about our work that we've done this year on food waste, um, when we are seeing these enterprises develop, they are um, really touching on a number of the sustainable development goals and having an impact across you know, an, a number of different challenges. Um, so this year, if we take food waste uh, innovation challenge as an example, um, we're not only creating businesses that then create jobs and, and boost economic growth and so on, we are also addressing some really serious uh, environmental impacts. Um, the impacts of food waste touch on um, you know, sustainable consumption and production, on um, energy and water usage. And also, uh, as we know, when food is wasted, it goes to landfill and produces huge amounts of greenhouse gas emissions, so it contributes to climate change. So with um, supporting these kind of enterprises to, to start up and supporting these entrepreneurs, we're managing to really hit a number of the mm. SDGs. I mean, so you're touching on our food waste innovation challenge mm. that we're working on together. Looking ahead, what excites you in terms of what do you think is the next space in which entrepreneurs can play a role in terms of solving for a challenge and bringing in some innovation? Mm. So I will t I'm biased in this because I have a strong passion around the oceans economy. Okay. Yes, so we're really excited. We're starting to put um, sort of blue economy innovation challenges and enterprise development into our pipeline for next year. And I think, you know, in South Africa, it's really, um, we have this huge comparative advantage with our coastline and the, and the number of endemic species and, and so on that we have, which has not yet been leveraged. And I think there's really an enormous opportunity there for entrepreneurs um, to start creating and solving and building. In, in the oceans economy. And it's all about building back better. Absolutely. Building back bluer. And building back bluer. And, <laughs> I mean, the, from the Branson Center, we try to figure out how we can make that red. Red, yeah, no, but it's not going to fly. Maybe not <laughs> a great thing when it comes to the ocean. So, Simone, I mean, this has been a wonderful chat, and there's so much more to talk about when we start thinking about sustainability, the sustainable development goals, and then, of course, what could be exciting. And so, I'm looking forward to walking this journey with you as a partner in terms of transforming our planet. Thank you and we are too. We are very proud to have Branson Centre as our partner. Thank you. Thank you.